This video shows how to generate a partial auxiliary view in Katia. The pipe elbow was created previously. Let's first edit the title block. The drawing file was created previously. And this is the only sheet we want to create. So change the sheet number to 1 slash 1. Switch back to the working view. Now we're going to use the front view icon to import the front view. Select the YZ plane to show the front view on the drawing sheet. Make sure you can go to the properties to reduce the scale by half and show the hidden line, center line, and axis. And check the fillets so you can hide the fillets in the front view. Fillets can only be shown in the isometric view. Continue, we are going to use the auxiliary view icon to generate the auxiliary view, which is projected off the front view. Continue, we're going to use the isometric view icon to create the isometric view. Reduce the scale of the isometric view to 1 to 4. Drag the frame to move it to the upper right corner. Now we're going to focus on the auxiliary view. Keep the auxiliary view to be the primary view. Because the purpose of the auxiliary view is to show the visible incline surface so you can hide all the hidden lines. Delete all the center lines in the auxiliary view. Use the center line with a reference to create a bolt circle, which is a theoretical circle and helps define the position of equally spaced holes. Click the small circle and then the big circle to show the center line with a reference. Click the square box to have the center lines connected. Continue to use the center line with a reference to click the circular edge of the hole and the circular edge of the face to generate a center line which is projected off the front view. Continue to use the clipping view to create the partial auxiliary view. Make sure to use the tool's palette to define the radiance, which is a little bit bigger than the radiance of the circular base. Start the dimensioning work. Make sure you use the numerical decimal inch as the inch expression. Change the font size to 2.5 mm. Remember, all the external diameter should be labeled in the rectangular view. All the internal diameter should be labeled in the circular view. In the circular view, all of the diameter should be labeled by following the leader line. So once you have the dimension lines created, make sure you use the dimension line window to update the expression to the leader line. Define the size of the repetitive circles. When the angular spacing between the repetitive circles is 90 degree, it is inclined and there's no need to dimension it. Make sure you use the dimension text to show the numbers in front of the diameter, which represent the number of the repetitive feature.
continue to use the angular dimension to show the angular spacing between the two circular bases in the front view. To the fillets, remember to use the text icon to generate a note. In the note, specify the size of the fillets. Press down the Shift key to adjust the position of this text box. Continue to use the dimension icon to focus on the rest of the dimensional work. Here we're going to label the thickness of the circular base. Always remember to follow the rules to finish the dimensioning work. The dimensions given in the problem may not reflect the accurate precision of the dimensions. Use the radiance icon to specify the radiance of the arcs. Activate the intersection point, so you will be able to label the point-to-point -point distance in the front view. Keep the smaller dimensions closer to the view. Have the dimensions grouped as much as possible. Continue the diameter dimension. If you do not need to use the intersection point detection, make sure you turn it off. If you press down the control key, click one square box, you can adjust the length of the center line in one direction. Check your dimensioning work. Make sure you do not generate any repeated dimensions. Do not miss any dimensions. We're going to convert the drawing file into a PDF file.